Okay, uh, welcome everyone. It is uh, 2.31 uh, and uh, the board meeting will convene. We have a quorum present. Um, I know we have uh, several, as we always do, uh, guests in the audience, but I would like to uh, introduce Jim Shalek. Uh, who is here at the meeting. Jim is a newly uh, appointed uh, board member and uh, our understanding is that next Monday the Senate will be taking up the appointments and uh, at that time uh, uh, hopefully uh, will be confirmed. Uh, but welcome Jim. Uh, very pleased you could attend today. Uh, the first item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, has there been any? We do any? not have anyone scheduled for public comment. Okay. Uh, are there any additions <coughs> or changes to the agenda? Not that I'm aware of. Then we'll move on to approval of the minutes. And uh, we have the minutes from the January board meeting. Unfortunately, due to uh, lack of quorum uh, for, I guess, the first time ever, I think, uh, we weren't able to hold a meeting in February, but um, the regulation uh, for a quorum when you are um, missing a board member, when you have a vacancy in a board member, is that a majority of the board uh, needed to be present, which would be four out of the, the six, uh, and we only had three at that time due to illness. So um, are there any uh, comments, uh, additions, uh, questions about the minutes? A move we accept the minutes. Second. All in favor signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, there was a correction made to the provisional canvas minutes. Um, that was sent around. Mm -hmm. It's on page four, number three. Um, there was a typo. Uh, it had 585, which was the total number of provisional ballots when the number should have been 530 um, provisional ballots um, that the applicants were, was not registered. Yes. 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 Um, how was it discovered? The state board staff contacted me when they were viewing the canvas minutes and asked us to correct it. Because because they had because uh, we had given them the results otherwise and the minutes didn't match the results we'd given them or I mean how did they know? Uh, be because in uh, be because the MD voters. Uh, that they verified two uh -huh. did not match. Did not match. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have to do uh, anything with that change uh, uh, just to, to I approve? Would just need a motion to oh. amend um, page four, number three, um, that the election director presented 530 provisional ballots with the recommendation to reject because staff could not confirm that the applicant was a registered voter. I've moved. I have moved. I have stated. Amend whatever Margaret is there. Is there a second? Second. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, at last, we get to move to uh, the election of a board secretary for which we've uh, had a vacancy. Uh, due to the death of Nancy Dasick. Uh, are there motions? David? I'd like to move that we elect Nahid as the secretary. Second. I'll second that. Okay. And are there any additional mo uh, motions? Nominations? Okay. Nominate. Uh, Jim, hearing my, none, shall, for shall we move? <laughs> <laughs> I can come back. <laughs> I made the motion, but I don't get to vote for it. <laughs> uh, 
let's see. Can we have a motion to close nominations? You need one if there's no other nominations? No, let's do it. Humor me. Okay. Motion to close. Thank yeah. you. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, on favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Um, all those in favor of Nahid as the secretary to the Board of Elections signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Please let the record show it's unanimous. <laughs> happily, happily, happily unanimous. <laughs> That's my first secretarial uh, job. Uh, your yeah. first secretarial job. That's yep. right. <laughs> um, okay. Next is uh, the election director status report, Margaret. Okay. Um, all the, at this time, all the temporaries have been placed in a, inactive status except for the voter registration section, which is utilizing four temporary staff people. The goal is to complete the list maintenance requirements required by MD voters um, by no later than the end of April or sooner. Um, meeting staff has been attending various meetings related to the implementation of the new voting system. Um, we'll address that a little later. Uh, staff attended training uh, for public demonstration of uh, the new voting system uh, on, no, was it March 4th? I, th I think we got deferred. I think it was February. Anyway, we di did learn how to uh, utilize the new voting system and my, my intent is to demonstrate it a little later. Additionally, the League of Women Voters held a meeting on March 11th at the Silver Spring Civic Center. The organizers of the meeting asked for a presentation regarding different ways to vote. I presented a five-minute presentation on the different manner to vote, and Herberto presented and demonstrated the new voting system. Um, How many people were there? Oh, I don't know, maybe 35? Thank you. Hmm. All right, then... Um, and those, uh, we will discuss the voting system meetings a little further in the meeting. Okay. Okay. The work, the project management work group. That, that'll that's be at later. The end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want budget. to go on to the budget? Okay, the budget. Uh, the budget is fairly extensive. Um, we did send it out in the packet. Uh, for the FY15 operating budget, Margie did send a memorandum uh, with all but a few of the temporaries, as I mentioned, in inactive status. We will be close to our budgeted level over time. We're showing a slight deficit. Um, we did receive our credit for uh, the mistake that was made over in the Department of General Services. And we have received invoices for the first two quarters of the fiscal year from the state. Um, we will be receiving the balance of the bills towards the, uh, the next quarter for the 2014 November election. Are there any questions? Uh, there's nothing we're concerned about here. We're, you know, on target for... Right now, yes, we are. Okay. Okay. Getting, getting closer all the time. Are we talking about 16 also? Or? No, we are now. Oh, we okay. just did okay. okay. Um, this is a copy of the uh, county executive's news release. If you look at this budget, Margie again uh, has a, in your packet, um, has described what the impact of the FY16 county executive's recommended budget. Speaking, paraphrasing the county executive, um, the Montgomery County uh, budget is kind of a stay put bu budget. Um, the overall increase, if you look at his, his uh, media release, is overall 1.1%. Uh, specifically to the county board of elections budget, um, the equipment costs are right now viewed as supplemental requests during the upcoming fiscal year. Outreach at this time will be taken out of the current budget and the stipend uh, recommended that um, we ask for that at the next fiscal year. 
Margie goes in to did provide you a copy of the letter that Marianne sent to the county executive on behalf of the board, which was dated December 3rd. And um, uh, the, as she states in her memo to the board members that um, there were no additional funds for temporary employees to conduct acceptance testing or to do any of the outreach. No funds were added to the overtime line item. No funds were included to increase an election judge stipend and no additional funds were added for the advertising outreach. Um, my recommendation, Madam President, is, is that the Budget Committee should meet to decide how they wish to prepare and advise staff on what to prepare for your April 16th Government Operations Committee appearance before the County Council. And as I said, it's April 16th at 9.30 a.m. Uh, I certainly agree. Uh, that's going to be an extremely important uh, meeting in light of this budget, uh, which for our purposes is very disappointing. Uh, could you just go over uh, some of the, the major things that, you know, are obviously going to concern us? So I understand it. the equipment they put they show no money for equipment because they're saying that needs to be dealt with as a supplemental. However, am, am, am I not correct that we have, we have payments that come due yes, pretty quarterly. early in the game for that, so it's not like we can wait down the line. And, and I guess we need to really get a handle on those dates as to uh, how that's going to be paid for. Yes, and I did reach out to our budget analyst to request uh, further information on how that should be handled. Um, in the packet, uh, again, on, it's dated March 10th, uh, we have been notified by the state that uh, our expectation uh, for the upcoming fiscal year for the new equipment is, and the project management personnel will be two point almost $2.6 million. And then last week, um, which I believe was also sent out in your packet, we also were notified that there will be a supplemental billing of approximately $509,000. Um, and that will be for the thumb drives, uh, the express pass printers, the ballots, privacy, privacy sleeves, and election management support. So that's nearly $3 million. Um, and even if, let's say, it's a quarterly billing, uh, that would basically wipe out our current operations budget. The first quarter, which is about half the wipe out our operations budget. If, 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 if we, we paid it if at, at, yeah, in the timely fashion. I'm so, like I said, I did reach out to our budget analyst, and I don't know if she's here, but we um, did request that she attend the meeting. Okay. Uh, well, we need to have these numbers uh, buttoned down, um, uh, you know, very tight before before we go before the council and, and make our case. Mm -hmm. uh, David, if you'll wait, please. Yeah, sure, I have sure, a couple sure. others. Yes, I just wanted to go through these, these uh, things no, where no, I question. No, Outreach uh, really makes my heart stop. Um, they are just leaving that at, at the 20,000 uh, uh, that, yes. that we currently have. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the discussion that took place uh, where there was going to be funding through the county executive's office uh, for some of the communication and outreach, is, is that not in this picture either, or um, do we know? The, the theory, or what was suggested in those discussions, was that we would attempt to utilize the PIO office as our contractor to help us do the development and thus reducing <coughs> the initial 
$150,000. When we knocked it down, $60,000. So it would be uh, $70,000 more or a total of $90,000. And no, those funds did not make it either. Wow. Um, I mean, you know, that we were short-handed with, uh, with outreach money to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a rather feisty hearing before the co County Council uh, Committee uh, in our last session regarding outreach mm -hmm. and how what serious an issue. an issue it is with them and, you know, all of us cognizant that you can only do it with money. And on top of it all, we have all the new, you know, equipment that we've got to get out and meet with people and, you know, uh, do, we wanted to do early training with groups of election judges, etc. So this is, uh, this is really a, a, a very serious item. Has there ever been in the history of the world, the, I'm coming, trying to come to this at a different angle, uh, the county executive and the budget process, that the two central committee chairman approach the get out the vote which is good for both parties and anyway approach the county council on the budget thing as a uh, a united effort to put pressure has anybody ever thought about trying to get them this is something that it certainly is in everybody's best interest and if our pressure doesn't do it Maybe we need to get some outside pressure at work. I think it's an interesting idea. I yeah. haven't heard of that. I can't recall that happening. That's why I said the history I've been, of the I've world. Been, I've been following <laughs> this stuff for a long time. Me yeah. too. Um, and I don't recall that happening in the I past. just can't imagine you know, why there would be a problem. You're not suggesting getting money for them, uh, I take no, it. I'm money, yet we know, I'm isn't going to be on the table. them asking for money for us Supporting. to get out for, to support, support us. Support yeah, effort right. to get we, out the we, vote. We obviously can't speak for them. No, but, I'm just um, I'm just but, throwing out the idea right. of perhaps getting some suggestions in that direction. Well, I think in, in light of these numbers, and I know this was not uh, done, you know, as, uh, you know, hey, we're not, we're not going to give the election board anything, move on to something else. I mean, the budget is very, very tight. And incidentally, the but League of Women Voters, I'd be interested, they could do. You do? Yeah, okay, in this, for this, they okay, this instance only. They have traditionally been very supportive of any increases in our budget. I, I, I would guess that there'd be a lot of organizations that would be very interested in our outreach leading up to the 2016 election, especially because of the new voting system, et, et, et cetera. I mean, I don't, I don't think it would be limited to the parties. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yes. I mean, you know, the whole uh, concern of outreach in general and then tied into the low voter turnout and the fact how how do we get you know more voters out how do we you know get them knowledgeable on it now obviously the board of elections plays a, a, a somewhat smaller role in in that part of it because our role is to make sure people know there's an election know how to vote where to vote all that kind of thing and that's and all the new equipment and doing that uh, the political parties and candidates have uh, well, a, 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 an additional role in, in, in terms of, you know, trying to get those numbers up. But, but we're a big part of that, and because the parties are also involved in it, obviously I would welcome their support. Yeah. Um, so there, there, there is an effort in Annapolis to start a Blue Ribbon Commission to look at the low turnout uh, of voting in the last election. Uh, and it's, it's a joint kind of party effort from Republicans and Democrats and independents and so on to, to actually increase voter participation. Uh, and one of the things I think that um, if hopefully if they come together is that they feel very strongly that outreach is a huge um, tool in order to, to achieve that. Yeah. But from having been at that meeting, we were at the right meeting, right? We were all at the same meeting and, and I thought, you were there, right, with the council? Mm -hmm. we, yeah. Were you not helping us on, on with the briefing? Um, I didn't want to put you in the spot, but it's a little familiar. <laughs> I am your budget analyst at the council. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and you were there too. 
the, the big discussion around that table, um, and even uh, I think then we had the commission on voting come after after us and and uh, and testify, was that outreach is such an essential ingredient, especially with the changes that are coming down the pipe, in order to outreach to new voters, old voters, and old voters. And I think we did the math. I don't know if it was you, or one of the council members, uh, that twenty thousand dollars for. The investment that we're putting in to outreach the voters—I don't know if it came to less than what one and a half pennies for the voters oh, that yeah, we have. Was, I mean, it was very, 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 very low, and it's just something that I hope you can take back. Um, that is really just not realistic uh, for what you know. We have all the good intentions, but unless we have the money and the budget, we really can can do it. We can do so much. Miracles really is not part of uh, our mandate. <laughs> so. The analyst. This is the council analyst. Yeah. Soon to be. Mm -hmm. The next show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David. Uh, I would just add to what Marianne and Gracie have already said that um, I do think that if um, we have additional outreach relating to the new voting system, Mm -hmm. that that will have a positive effect on keeping lines shorter which um, because there will be less confusion about how the voting system works and that that will have a positive effect on turnout. Um, I'm not saying that that will be, that's, that's the whole ball game obviously because turnout is affected by a lot of things but the one thing we don't want to have is to have reports on election day of long lines so that people assume that you know that, that it's going to be a major problem for them to go vote. And so I think that our outreach relating to the new voting system that we've been talking about since the council meeting and before, I think mean, is, is directly related to keeping the line short and, and, and helping that turn out. Um, I did have one other question, if, if you're done, um, uh, uh, about, the, about the executive's budget. I just wanted to make sure, that, uh, if I understand correctly, he has not done anything to change um, the budget for early voting. Is no, we good? still have nine early voting. Mm -hmm. We're budgeted at nine. Exactly. We're still budgeted at nine, at nine early voting sites. Yes. Okay, good. That's um, and I guess the other big one there was the stipend uh, request that uh, we had asked for the election judges, and uh, there's yeah. no increase in that, correct? Correct. Um, I, I say the other big one, there, there's so many of these that are that are big. The um, overtime budget. What? What what does that mean, Margaret? In terms of um, no uh, no funds were added to overtime, but um, um, it just it stays at its it current stays level. At its current level. Uh, our concern with regards to overtime is um, with the advent of same day voter registration that will have a potential impact. Um, we think, but we're not certain yet. Um, there's also a certain level of expectation that there's additional pieces of equipment that are going to have to be prepared. Um, but I think maybe the most um, there there's a need for. If I were going to focus my uh, my resources, I would say to get the temporary employees to accept the acceptance testing, as well as doing the outreach, the funds for the advertising outreach, and one way or the other, this county is responsible is going to be responsible for their 50 percent of the the equipment the equipment costs. But I concur with um, everyone at this table that. Um, we know from research, from hearings recently heard, um, that in order for this to work successfully, we need to teach people how to uh, interact with it so that we don't have long lines, whether it's at early voting or election day. Absolutely. Uh, we'll uh, we'll work on getting uh, a, a, a time frame for the uh, budget committee uh, to meet prior to recognizing the holidays that uh, come in with uh, Easter and Passover. Yeah. Um, a question 
perhaps it doesn't have to be answered right away unless it's an obvious uh, answer. Um, I'm just wondering whether there's, uh, since the last time we met, there have been certainly changes in the expected number of candidates to appear on the ballot in the, in the mm -hmm. primary in 2016. <laughs> yeah. One way to put it. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to put it in as neutral a way yes. as I can. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering if we have any thought as to how that impacts our, our, our budget specifically. Like, you know, you know is we there... We don't budget based on turnout. Um, okay. Um, but I guess, are there other aspects that we can expect that our workload will increase because the number of candidates that are and the number of ballot styles, you, you know, et cetera. Um, like I said, the number of ballot styles will be the same, but the number of candidates certainly is going to be um, far greater than what we might have thought two months ago. I would probably say that, you know, looking with the recent developments as reported in the news, uh, with the retirement of the senior senator from Maryland and all the ripple effects of that, um, the thought that anyone had that we would have a low voter turnout uh, has just gone away. <laughs> um, and so in 2012, 12, I think that, I forget, the turnout was 16, 20 percent. Um, we were able to get by with, I think, 19,000. Uh, not 19, 1900 election judges, and, and there's absolutely no way we're going to be looking at. Uh, I, you know, I can't imagine that anyone running at the federal level isn't going to spend millions of dollars in Montgomery County specifically uh, for U.S. Senate and the at least one congressional race that already is going to be open. Um, I would suggest that the voter turnout could be as high as it was in 2008, which was well over 50 percent. The so other item, of course, that job. does usually can impact us um, financially tied to an election is if we have um, a lot of issues uh, <laughs> and uh, the ballot issue, ballot questions. and. Um, you know, traditionally, this election does have a number of them uh, in this time period, the presidential election. Of course, that would be in the general, though, not not in the primary, but um, which falls in the next budget, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the budget years and our voting years are always uh, mixed up in there. But um, uh, is there any anything else on the on the budget, Allison? And I, I would just like to make sure to put on the table uh, from a staff perspective on this is the degree to which uncertainty is really the enemy of proper planning for us. And to the extent that funds are going to be ultimately covered in a supplemental or we are expected to anticipate <coughs> that, it, it makes it more challenging for us to properly plan at this point in time to make sure that we, you know, we have to the extent that we're going to be hiring temporary personnel to go out and do the outreach in order to cover events that are happening early in the fiscal year, in order to enter into contracts, in order to do the work that is more expensive that we would be doing in, in outreach sense. Uncertainty creates some challenges for us in a window of time when we have to make decisions and move ahead with our plans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Certainly, I think we need to take every advantage of the time period we have from now until the end of this fiscal year with uh, outreach. And we might want to, uh, you know, take a look at those plans where, you know, where we're going into the community. I think you've already started with some uh, community meetings with the equipment. And um, I would say, you know, let's look at the budget, let's look at those plans, and let's see what additions we might be able to get in uh, during, you know, April, May, and, and June. Okay. Question, do you know how much we have between now and June, what the budget left for outreach? Mm -hmm. oh, it's it's so well, it, yeah. yeah, it's gone. Mm -hmm. right. But so. you know, I mean, we're, we're yeah. talking about I would be moving happy. it around. We would be happy. I mean, first of all, we don't even have all the paper for mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. and we do not have a bilingual ballot. 
so we really <laughs> can't go out yet. So we're supposed to have a paper. We better have it before we go to the committee. This week, and we're supposed to have a bilingual ballot by the end of next week. So, by the end of next week? Yes, so they're working on it. Um, they have very, you'll see, we're going to demo it. They have very, very simple election that doesn't really engage. They call it the BMW ballot. The BMW? Yeah, it's a vote for your favorite car type thing. Oh, okay. okay. So, Sounds anyway. really, really yeah, slanted to right. call it the BMW. Well, I, you know, <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. That's how come we uh, uh, get We, we as election officials, at least, should come up with something neutral. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they uh, or <laughs> dare dare I say uh, an American car? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah well. I was just thinking it. Uh, possibly the Cadillac or the uh, <laughs> vendor stuff that they've been using for years. Um, okay. All right. Going further, uh, election. Please do it. I've lost my agenda. Election uh, <laughs> photo registration. Uh, first of all, the Green Party petition met all the provisions of law and continues to be a recognized political party. Um, the staff has been focused on list maintenance, uh, finishing up the ERIC listings that we received from the State Board of Elections, processing incoming voter applications and updates to the voter file, and finishing out the NCOA, we received that uh, listing just, we did an update of the uh, national change of address, compared it to our current data, and we're working through Mar that. Excuse me, Margaret, how many states are on ERIC now? Nine. Twelve? Eleven, I think. Okay. Eleven or twelve? Eleven. It's eleven. Have eleven. you found it to be, how many? Eleven plus Thank you. Eleven. Have you found it, um, to be worth the money that's being spent on it for the data that we're getting in? I think, yeah, definitely, compared <laughs> to what we had before. Yeah, definitely okay. worth the money. Thank it's you. It's the best way. I mean, there have been, I mean, there's just various steps that have gone through. Eric is one step. Um, the legislature changing the law to allow us to utilize the Social Security Administration to reach back and get Old death do those Social Security numbers go onto the ERIC database, or do they just use Social Security as a resource? No, this is a separate. This is we take the voter registration database, the state uh, interacts and bounces the data. The latest thing that the state did was the complaint is that there's all these individuals on the voter file that have been deceased for X amount of years. So, and there was no legal vehicle for the state board to go in and uh, pull those names off unless we send two mailings and, you know, the whole tenure. So, what we did do, what the law was changed, the state took the file, we, we pulled our file, we pulled two different files last year, sent that to the state board of individuals that have not voted in their for whatever reason, and ask them to compare it to the old death records in the Social Security Administration. And then um, there's a process in which we follow, which involves one letter. Does it include one letter? Yeah, it does include one letter, so that we're finally able to release those names out of our active file. And do you know how many have been done, approximately? We did a bounce of 4,000, I thought. Was it that many? No, the first time it was 681, and then oh, this, okay. the last time it was 407. Okay, I'm sorry. 16 and then 400? No, Six, 681. I'm 600, and then the last time it was 470. Thank you. So uh, there are different s steps that we're doing in terms of trying to do better list maintenance. And I had uh, thought that when people didn't vote in five elections or whatever, they were automatically dropped somehow. That that's they, what the law said, but they're not automatically done anything to. No. There's a step-by-step uh, -step process, and I'd be happy to share that with you. Yes. Thank you. Again. All of us, please. Okay. Okay. Um, going on, is there any other further questions with regards to voter registration? 
Oh, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I renewed my license. I went to MBA. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very interesting because um, when you're, you know, when you're going through all the mechanical stuff, you want to be a donor and all that. And 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 I said to the guy, I said, oh, by the way, I'm already a, a registered voter. Um, but the the question comes up: you want to register, yes or no? But there's nothing to say, you know, I'm already registered. Um, so I said no, but I wanted to tell the machine, but I'm already registered. Don't mess up my registration. But there's no way to do that. And it was interesting because the, uh, the guy I said to him, but I'm already registered. He said, I know, I shouldn't do that. I, I try to put it in that you're already registered, but it keeps popping up on the screen. Um, and there was no way think, for me to check. I mean, that's fine to, yeah. uh, we're going to talk about this in depth, aren't we, with the, are is we? that's on yeah, the agenda? Are we? Okay. Yeah. The, on your old business. Do you want to let a committee yeah. update? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can save your story. I'll save yeah, my <laughs> but I but I like it. Keep keep it because yeah, we're we're, we're going to be doing we're going to be doing a follow up there. Yeah, we have don't to follow. It. Yeah, yeah. And old business. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Going on to the state board of elections, I uh, sent to you uh, your biennial agenda for June 10th. Uh, the meeting is mandatory for the board members, the attorney, the director. One day. No, no. One day is mandatory, or you have to stay. One June day 10. is mandatory. Right. And that's June 10th. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There is a meeting on June 11th, which is the mail meeting, right. which will also, right now, uh, I believe I sent the agenda. You can review can that. Get, yes. It's State still here. Board of Elections is focused on the replacement of the voting systems. Additionally, the greatest interest of the local boards and many of those involved is education and monitoring the actions of the State General Assembly, especially as it relates, relates to the primary election. I'm going to let Allison cover that under legislative report. Um, new regulations requires the SBE when in receipt of a notice from the jury commission that a registered voter is not a citizen, the election director shall mail a letter to the voter notifying them of their removal from the voter registry. And we also received from the state board um, instructions from, from the state board how to begin the packaging and packing of the TS units and OS units that will be removed by July, June 1st of this year. So um, that's pretty much the state board. Um, Allison, do you want to talk about the legislative report? Sure. Um, I will, before I move on to the legislative report, I'll just mention the order I believe I'll distribute a copy of the mail agenda. I had um, indicated to the board at one point previously, I just want to update you. Um, I have been chairing a committee that has been um, developing some ideas to enrich the agenda for the Maryland Association <laughs> of Election Officials. Um, and that, that process has moved forward. There were there was a list of about 14 different breakout sessions that were proposed to mail to um, to add on to the agenda. They have they unfortunately reached the point where they really needed to go ahead and get an agenda out where those options have not yet been really slotted into time slots or, or put forward. So we are not yet in the position that we had hoped to be in of allowing you to really make your decisions about whether you're going to attend for one day or two days based on being able to make choices about what these optional sessions are and whether you would want to stay for them or not. But that is hopefully coming. There is going to be a Mayo meeting um, on the 25th, I believe it is, where um, hopefully they will make those decisions, and hopefully soon after that we'll be able to give you a better sense of what the what you would stay for. If you stay for <coughs> Looks like so you're Thursday saying would be the day. You're on, we only have Thursday to be there Thursday. Wednesday, is that yes. correct? That, but it looks from this like Thursday. Thursday's the day. When yeah. It doesn't Thursday. have anything in it at all Thursday. for Wednesday. That's the state That's board. what you're saying? Thursday. The state board Thursday. develops Thursday. their agenda. It's and it's dinner, generally dinner. somewhat late. But the Mayo meeting for, on Thursday is you all, it's not us. You, you are welcome we to it. I, I understand, but... The, okay. So do we arrive on the 10th? The Thursday. Oh, no, no. We must, uh, if you want, 
you know, in terms of the mail, it's not us. Um, it's them. Margie will be contacting okay. you with regards to what your hotel requirements are. Okay. okay. I just want to know so I can put it in my calendar and block. I, I already blocked the tent. Okay. We will be there so Tuesday and Wednesday. The they, 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 two days are paid for, correct? Two nights. Two nights, right. yes, two yeah. Nights yeah. Even though you don't know what's on the agenda yet, Thursday is optional. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday is optional, and you will soon know more about what's on if the agenda. If you're going to be there two days, if Tuesday and Wednesday better than than Wednesday and Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday are the are the best days the to be days. there. Wednesday is the day you have to be there. I understand. Yeah. But Thursday looks like it's all staff. Yes, it, that's so what I want to say. It, um, there's. There's designated breakouts for the boards as well, I believe, on Thursday. This is what's still being developed. So this is not In which final. case, then you're really talking three nights. If you stay Thursday. Night. That's the case. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If you stay for the island music dancing and well, uh, but no, but you cannot come but back. But how late? Thursday. You don't. Uh, how late does the stuff go? I mean, you don't. Right. The uh, the actual mm -hmm. meetings will probably be wound up by five. Well, it is a three-hour trip. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I, right, would would you me. would you look into that? Uh, we, raise raise the issue that you know there may have to be three three nights accommodated. Mm -hmm. And um, the agenda came out Friday afternoon. I basically downloaded it, sent it out. Um, Margie knows about it, and she is. As soon as she gets back, she will um, set aside a block of rooms, and I will tell her that there is some interest for three nights, and then we can back out from there. Okay. This is very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's good to have a start on it. Legislatively, you all received a copy of the document that the State Board of Elections distributes. Last Monday, they distributed a 31-page chart of the <laughs> status of Senate and House bills. Um, we'll have another one this Monday, but you clearly don't have that yet. Um, I did spend some time, there was a lot of legislative activity last week, and I spent some time over the weekend and this morning going through what advanced. And I do just want to update you on the fact that, first off, the bill to change the date of the primary election is proceeding, and the date that is currently in both the House and Senate bills is April 26th. So now it's the fourth Tuesday in April rather than the first Tuesday in April. Um, that bill passed the Senate and then passed the second reading in the House. So that's the date that is currently in near final decision-making process. It's April 26th. I'm going to assume it's April 22nd for primary. Huh? April 22nd for primary. Yeah, I... Oh, not, not everybody. And so it. the uh, early voting would begin... Uh, April 26th, the Thursday, early voting Thursday, would begin Thursday, April 14th through April 21st. It was sent electronically? It was yeah. part of the advance. Oh, no, you sent it electronically. You sent it electronically? Mm -hmm. We can... What is it? We can reach one. That 31-page Senate and House bill. Okay. Yeah. 2016. Yeah, okay, what are you talking? We sent you an updated one on Friday, I believe. There will be another one. They come every two weeks. So, so anyway, early voting, early voting begins 21st. April 14th to the 21st. I believe Easter is, what did I tell you? Easter, Easter is April 3rd. Thir yeah. And no, 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 sixth. sorry. Is no, no, March. March no, 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 it's March 27th. Though. No, Easter is April. Look at oh, oh, wait, that's the next one. 2016. Yeah. 16. What do you but, have? But, um, yeah, Easter is March 27th, I believe, or... March 28th. March 28th, is that right? I'm looking for it. March 27th. Easter is the 20th, yeah. And Passover is the 23rd to the 30th. Pa so Passover is the 23rd to the 30th. Of, Passover starts on the night of April 22nd. Right. So basically, early voting will end. Passover will, will the beginning of Passover will be the same as the weekend before the election. Mm -hmm. So I don't, if you have election judges who are celebrating Passover, there could be a need to have alternatives for when they can get their materials and such uh, for some people. Okay. Um, um, and then, yeah. 
I mean, for people who are observant, that Saturday and Sunday they won't be working. The, um, there is also a bill, just to let you know, in the circumstances when a voter dies in between casting their ballot and when the ballots are counted, right now the instructions that we have are that when we learn about this, the ballot is to be rejected. There is legislation to change Whoa. that. Whoa! If they voted, yeah. yeah that's hold right. on, the hold on, they're changing. Yeah. They're changing. Look at yeah, it. Yeah. Read, read There's the legislation to change that so that oh. you would be able yeah. to count that ballot. Right. And that Legislation too has already passed the Senate and passed second reading in the House, so right. that's on its way. But it's stupid. Bill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the bill's good. Track <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, There, there has been a discussion that I know you all have been privy to to some extent of the the challenges we have with parking at early voting sites, and there was some legislation introduced to that. The legislation there was at one point language in the bill that said that we were to magically uh, come up with sufficient parking on site to accommodate the maximum number of voters expected to be present at the early voting center. <laughs> that has been modified somewhat, so now it says to the extent appropriate and practicable we are to have sufficient parking to accommodate the voters that we expect to drive to the early voting center. The bill doesn't actually give us any means to increase the amount of parking that we have available. <laughs> But um, but that bill too. What is it? It, it, it said sounds dry. to me like it doesn't say anything. Read that again, would you please? This bill was introduced and because of said? something that happened in Harford County. Oh. They had inadequate parking at a early voting center, and the election director made arrangements for the local bus, public transit, to bus individuals from the parking lot to the early voting center, and someone objected to it. Objected to the bus? Yes. So that's how this bill got introduced. Mm -hmm. It goes to the Chase Center, no parking. Um, there is also a bill that has passed um, second reading in the Senate with some amendments to um, accommodate voting rights for felons who have completed their term of imprisonment. At this point, those individuals also have to wait through their period of probation or parole if there is any. Um, this legislation, Senate Bill 340, would allow those individuals to, re to register immediately upon completing their term of incarceration. Um, register and vote. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, as soon as they're released. There is a bill that's gone through some uh, amendments that we're monitoring too, which would provide for a special election to fill vacancies in the Montgomery County Board of Education. The current language in the most recent amendment to that provides for, uh, under certain cir under current circumstances, you have the normal procedure where individuals would advance in the same way that they do now. But under certain circumstances, if there was a special election by mail, this bill at present would allow for a top two runoff. Um, and so we're, we're monitoring that as well. That has advanced to second reading in the House. Um, and we have a bill that is, um, requiring the chief election official to provide an advanced determination of the sufficiency of the summary on a petition. Allison, just a minute. The top runoff on the Board of Elections, the runoff, what does that do education. to us? Do we have to no, hold it, a separate it, Board of Education? State education. State would need I understand Board of Education, but do we have to... modify their software to allow for that. But the runoff is at another time. Later? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we would have to have all the equipment delivered again and whatever? Yes. yes. Across the entire mail. county? This is if it's by mail. And it's in lieu of a primary. By mail? mail? No, no. Is it a runoff? Is it a separate election or is it a, you, you do the runoff when you cast your vote so you put your priorities of the candidates who are running? No. It's no, not ranked voting. This is top okay. two. This is top two and then first Just like election. Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, you wouldn't need a runoff if you had uh, ranked voting, right? Yeah. yeah. Although, although some people would call that a runoff when you do it. You know, yeah, but when I, you, what I'm a, it's going to cost us a bunch of money. If that happens. Mm -hmm. cost the county. Yeah, because yes. you have to do it through the whole county. You have to go through the whole county and do the whole voting thing again. Yep. So take the machines out, take them over, have judges, the whole thing, right? Is, is that for any vacancy, or is it only no, they're if you do hold the mail, election? Well, she during, said they would do it by mail. Are you going to do it by mail? Stop for a second. I'm hearing from the hinterlands over here. Oh, it's going to be done by mail. By mail? It's yeah. only if the timing of it is such that it's a standalone special election. 
a standalone primary in general. So if it's a standalone primary by itself as a special election, it would be done by mail. That would That's be at the option of the county. That would be the option of the county. Additionally, the county council. I'm, I'm, I'm by the whoever no. declares Which the point? election. Okay. Additionally, Council there's some there's some problems with the legislation that have been sent over to the attorney general's office. Okay. So we it's going to be changed. Basically, we get yeah. Basically, hmm. exactly. similarly, there's discussions on what the role would be of legal counsel and who's legal counsel in this bill to have our chief election official be in a position of, of, advan of providing an advanced determination on whether the summary on a petition is acceptable or not, um, is sufficient. And so there's some amendments and discussions over whose lawyer effectively is consulted to make those calls. Um, it, it's a 31 page list of bills that you have. Those are the only ones that have proceeded to second reading or beyond that right. I wanted to make sure to draw your attention to. Obviously there's a really, the legislative committee of Mayo has been quite busy with a lot of different bills. So we can, um, we can discuss any of them that you choose or, you know, we can certainly do so offline and later. No, I think that's that's great. Thank you for uh, pointing out those that are most necessary. Does anybody have any other items on that? Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda, if Margaret is that it for your report, yes, uh, is the board attorney's report, <coughs> and um, Kevin's uh, mother passed away oh, over the sorry. weekend, and um, so he is not able to to be here. Yeah, it's not been a good year, year for our board family. Yeah. Uh, we also have uh, Grace's yeah. grandmother passed away last yeah. week, and um, we are all very sorry about yeah. that. And so sorry, I'm always kind of because I'm making the funeral arrangements. It's my priest, so but I needed to be here. Is she here? Hmm? Yeah, she lived with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's almost 94. Great, great life. Mm. Good lady. That's. that's wonderful to mm -hmm. have that outlook where where was Kevin's mother was she uh, on the eastern shore uh, yeah I, I think she might have lived in Ocean City, City right yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um, at any rate uh, he did not have any uh, any burning issues for us so <laughs> obviously we is interested in our debate and in fact he uh, said if we needed to reach him by phone he would be available during our meeting so uh, we'll move on to old business and um, the Joint Audit Committee update. And let me begin by saying thank you to, I'm sure all the board members uh, join me in uh, thanking uh, Allison for such a great vehicle as the side-by-side -side that really uh, points up, you know, what we asked for uh, and uh, what was responded to, and the analysis that uh, uh, that remains, <laughs> or as a result. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I thought I sent it to you uh, a couple of days earlier than you got it, but apparently my first email didn't go through. I, I don't know. So. Uh, Margaret uh, mentioned something to me, and uh, fortunately, I had copied Margaret and Allison on it. And when she said, "No, I never got it," I'm like, "I better check this out and resend." Um, so I apologize that uh, you didn't have it as soon. Um, as you can see, there are some items that I think we're still concerned with, and uh, Grace has even something uh, more current in terms of. Uh, having just been through the process. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of questions. Having gone through. So let's open it for discussion. Allison, would you like to begin with a sort of a, a walkthrough? But, you know, we don't need everything red. Just just highlight under each area, if you would. Do you want to talk about it when she's doing that? Or yes, I think, and then we'll take up each of those areas. Okay, sure. Um, and I am eager to hear when we get to that point in the agenda what the most recent experience has been. In the <laughs> <laughs> um, because a lot of what the response was from the Motor Vehicle Administration was that they had made a series of programming changes effective in January. And I'm not familiar with these programming changes, and in some cases the detail isn't as much as it is in others. So, um, you know, really the 
that will resolve or answer some of the questions in terms of how much that has been done. Um, I think what the first page basically notes is that fundamentally what you all requested was um, was an audit. I think, as I recall from your prior discussions, there was discussion of asking for specific programming changes or specific procedure changes at the Motor Vehicle Administration, and I believe that you all had intentionally made a decision that you were hoping to have the legislative auditors do an audit in order to really uncover some of these things that you didn't necessarily have the information at your fingertips. Yeah, I made that motion, and I would like to say that none of it is it's only pieces, this is only pieces of what I had intended. Mm -hmm. I wanted an actual audit of voters, and if they are, in fact, their registration was correct. Voters that had been there, say, within the last year, audit 10% of them, and I think we used some numbers, if I remember at the time, David, that, uh, right. that we used some numbers that we wanted, and this none of this mm -hmm. is that. So that's my first mm -hmm. comment on it. I've got a number of others. So when the Joint Audit Committee asked the Motor Vehicle Administration for a response, what they sent back, and it was a response jointly signed by the MBA and the State Board of Elections, was information on a specific set of software revisions that they have made effective this past January. Um, and then they provided some screenshots of some additional screens, some additional text to appear on the screens and to appear on the forms. Um, and then they responded to our discussion about the procedures for handling the paper ballots. Um, right. Are we talking now about it, or did you say, Mary Ann, or you want to uh, put, uh, well, page or what? The rest just goes through detail. Then this is the, so. that's, that's just sort of the overview. So I have then a question. On the overview? Yes. Okay. Where it says uh, the, on line, the fourth line, response from the audit committee, uh, they're going to verify revised procedures have been implemented and voter registration inaccuracies mm -hmm. have been corrected. What I want to know is how they're doing that. I'd like mm -hmm. uh, that is sort of mushy. I'd that like was to a know phrase how on they're the letter. right. Okay. I think that's what they're intending with as we go through. Uh, the, no. they, they address specific areas. This whole thing brought up more questions than answers. But I, I think you know there are obviously mm -hmm. answers that a we're not necessarily pleased with, and and as you point out. Uh, areas where it's missing too. Okay, so then. Uh, so what pages two, three, and four really go through are the individual problem cases that you all had presented to the Joint Audit Committee, which uh, you know fundamentally come down to circumstances where um, either something was happening to an individual's voter record that they were later indicating they had not intended or requested. Um, or simply indicating not having seen the screens or not having been given an opportunity to attest to or to say yes or no to something. Um, and so what each one of these problem cases goes through is how matching up what it is that the response from the Motor Vehicle Administration says to each one of those problem cases. But fundamentally the d different answers are that there are um, that there are specific changes being made so that what is supposed to happen is that the voter will be making the selection unless the customer service agent affirmatively institutes an override, which they will now have to enter in a reason code for. So the, what a number of the voters had described and that you all went to the Joint Audit Committee with was a situation where the customer service agent was flipping through the screens and entering something without having, mm -hmm. without the voter touching it. And now mm -hmm. what is supposed to be happening effective January is that it is really not possible for the agent to just do it on behalf of the voter, that the voter is to do it unless there's a reason entered into the system why that wasn't possible. The only thing that is mentioned in the response from the Motor Vehicle Administration as a reason why that would be necessary is disability. It doesn't specify what the other reasons would be why a customer service agent would be taking over the process. That was my question. Order. What kind of reasons, what are they write, is there a place to write it down, or is there a one, two, three, and you check one, you know, you can't write in, in a building, whatever, that, and how is that verified? I uh, would assume that there is a piece of programming where they've entered in codes and you select one, but they did not mention to us what those codes so were. So we could find so that I, out. I don't know. Uh, as we're 
taking these issues that indicate that they have taken care of this and they're doing thus and such, can we interact? Uh, sure. Grace here, who's just mm -hmm. been through it and has seen what they're doing. So, um, so it's interesting that they said that that their um, that the voter or that I was I could like make my selections because that did not happen with me. Um, so you <laughs> you didn't see the screen it, itself. I let me tell you how how it went down. Um, so I told the gentleman who was, you know, I said, I'm, I'm a registered voter, you know, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, good, good, good. And I said, um, you know, and I said, just want to make sure my registration doesn't get messed up or anything. And he said, no, 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 no. And then he, um, he brought up the screen where it said, um, uh, voter registration, are, are you a voter, uh, are you a registered voter? And it had a yes column where you could click or um, or no and I said to him well but I'm already a registered voter so if I you know um, if I want to if I wanted to register I push yes like start a new registration yeah. I said no no well, if you don't want to register then say no I said well I'm already a registered voter so that doesn't really fit me because I already I said, I just want to see my registration that you guys have to make sure I just didn't want to no mess it up. <laughs> he said, oh, wait, that screen should not even come up then. If you're already a registered voter, that should not come up. So he tried it again, and, and he pushed something, because and, and, I wasn't doing anything. And, I, and the thing came up again, and he, and he got frustrated. He's like, oh, darn, it shouldn't be there. <laughs> and I was Which like, one did you go to? Walnut Hill. Walnut Hill. That's the one. Mm. Well, the hill. Um, now, is it true that if you go there and you're already registered to vote, that it shouldn't come up at all? Because does MBA what, have what does MBA have access to, to that? Yes, MBA does yeah. have access to that, and if they are able to pull up a match with a voter record, then you are to be presented with your registration information. And that's we what I wanted. And that's what she asked for. And that's yes. what I asked for. And uh -huh. he said, no, 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 I, I, I cannot do that. And I'm like, where, where is, is it like in the abyss? Like, where, it's in there. <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> he, he tried again and, and then the same thing came up, you know, yes or no. And I was like, I was like, just promise me you're not going to mess up my, but I know how to fix it, but just don't <laughs> mess it up. And I was just thinking, this is not fixed. You know, I know that we're supposed to work on it, and it's, it's so at least at the Walnut Grove um, station, it's not it's not fixed. And that also goes to training. I wrote down with all this needs great improvement, and how are these people trained? I think we need to get but some you know, information he, about their retraining. He knew, like it wasn't like oh yeah yeah just you know he knew because he tried again to get rid of it because I think you know he was trying to, but I don't know if it was a training. Or if the system mm -hmm. was not working. Yeah, it sounds like it's the system. So it's to me, that interaction was more like the system because he knew because he did it again to try to accommodate. You know, let me try it again, and he got frustrated. And I was like, Oh my gosh! It's like, did it ever come up? Huh? Did it ever come up? The right no, screen. he could not get it up. Is no. your name listed the same way? Oh yeah. I mean, is it hyphenated in both uh, places? Yeah, yeah, it's the same. I have. I mean, okay. I. You know, this was my fourth renewal. So then, what did one? What did you do when faced with that? Did you continue? I did the on sign of the cross, and I said, "Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, I'm still a Democrat by the end of this day." <laughs> and you just checked no. You didn't want to register, right? No, I couldn't even check no. It would not let me. It would but it not. Let you go, but it let him go on to your, the next screen to go on to get what you he needed. He just skipped it. He did something and he skipped so it. He, so he must have checked now or something. He did something, but I, I, I was just like, okay. My, my biggest One. concern was my eyesight. Yeah, but this, so, needs, this but system needs Grace, improvement. When did you go to one? Yeah, yeah, just, just what check was your record. Date? I'm a little embarrassed to say, it was almost on my birthday, way to the last minute, March 6th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. And the previous screens to be an organ donor, and did you touch the screen for those, or did the yeah? Touch no, the I touched the ones. You for touched the, the yeah, screens for the for, those. for yeah, which I was expecting the same thing for the voter registration. I was expecting the same, you know, the same pattern to um, to occur, and it didn't. But he tried. You know, it wasn't like he just did it, but he tried again because I I said hello, and he was just oh, it's not supposed to happen like this. <laughs> I said okay. 
So um, I don't know if it's training or if it's the software is just not working or or maybe that is a particular MBA, you know. But so at least in theory at this point, there ought to be a log of that where the agent indicated that they took over the transaction because of an override code, mm -hmm. which perhaps was because of your complaint that it wasn't doing it properly or whatever that was. But that ought to be a circumstance that can be tracked. And I'm now. still advocating for some kind of um, receipt or something to be printed for the person to, you know. Yeah, we, I'm that, still, we'll get to that uh, have, at the end. Know, yeah, that I have some kind of receipt, to, you know, and just to say, okay, so you are registered to vote, you are a donor, uh, so, you know, just an affirmation one that I was there and that, you know, um, because you leave with nothing, you know, you renew your license and that's Gracie, that's it. it says right here, the response from the Motor Vehicle Administration says, customer service agents will not be able to skip past this step in an in-person transaction without entering a reason for the override. Right, so and no that it didn't, that's exactly mm -hmm. what right. you're talking about. So he probably entered a reason. So this is totally Yeah, but I did not wrong. touch the screen. So my mom's license is coming up in, 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 in 10 days, so we're going to go to Clover oh, Road. Gosh. Oh yeah, great to go to another. I just take my family all around, okay? But Should we but, see if but it's the same outside of Montgomery County, or if it's just us. <laughs> I'm wondering. But it's still uh, worrisome. In this initial question that you're asked, yeah. which is, uh, do you do you want to register to vote? Yes, yes or, or no. no. Uh, there should be a yes, no, uh, and already, already registered, exactly. right? Well, I and mean, that's, doesn't that? And bucks, I think that was one of the points I brought up a couple of months ago, right? That they should be already an option saying, I'm already registered, you know. Okay. And but then you brought up an yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah. If there, if there is right? an already registered choice, we still are going to want to make sure that in fact, someone who thinks they're already registered is already registered, because otherwise they're going to leave thinking they're in good shape, and it may turn out that when we compare it to our records that they're not already registered. Madam President, in our discussions before this letter was written back in September, um, the position that was articulated by the State Board of Representatives staff person was that one of the reasons they don't ask the question, of, are you already registered to vote, is because of that human error. And the other piece was they were, they say yes or no. This is their response, oh. okay? All mm -hmm. right, yes or no. And then if you say yes, what they're trying to do is confirm that we have the most up-to-date address. That's the same, the same issue that we have with the absolute <coughs> Uh, online application. If you remember, we got complaints about it in mm -hmm. the general yeah. election. Yeah, you clicked on there, and where did it send you? Yeah. It sent you to voter registration. Right. What the state board staff is saying is that because people are so, and they are, 10% of them are always moving around, this is their way to capture the most up-to-date But you know what's interesting about 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 that, um, that response is that with the way technology is today, that if I were to say I'm already a registered voter, that, that my registration would not come up and say is the information is still accurate and up to date. And in theory, that screen is they say right here. Well, they, they, but that they, you know they, what I mean. If, yeah. if, if that it, that should be the next logical. Yeah, this screen is. The yeah. Uh, I mean, can I see it? Because I never. Well, and if they have an internet connection, along with her date of birth and her address, they should be able to look up whether she's registered to vote. I, you know, I'm just telling you what they do. Yeah. Me. Okay. That's what they're saying, though. Okay. Well, do we want to move toward making sure they do this? And oh, without a doubt. I mean, we're not we're not going away on yeah. on this issue. Put it that way. I, I would think it would need yeah. some greater. <laughs> yeah. um, explanation on the screens because if in Thank fact you. they want you to answer yes to register you know do you need to register to vote if they want you to answer yes if you if you're already registered but you changed your address and no if you're already registered and you don't have to change anything I would think you'd want to have instructions that say that because everybody who comes to that screen is trying to figure out okay I'm already registered what do I do or how do you want to check your voting status that I would push that immediately. 
to see if they had everything correct. Yeah, the, the only thing that worries me is that we're, we're, we're putting <clears throat> a lot of this information in the hands of an agency that we may not feel could represent us well. Mm -hmm. um, and I worry about, you know, we have enough problems with the MVA as it stands now, but the idea that that will be the primary way that people check on their voting registration status, um, or at least one of the primary ways, makes me, makes me concerned. Except you're doing it anyway, just in another manner. Right. The voter, mm -hmm. it comes up. Uh, this is just giving yeah, everybody I mean, the that's the trouble. They're right. doing it. But right. not in no, a right. and once, fashion. No, that's once they're doing it, I, mean, I, I would have, I would, I would make sure that there'd be a lot more explanation as to, you know, as to what they're but doing. But they already took some step to, you know, change the system. And get they to say them. they did, Nahi, but they didn't. They just, it, right here, they said they changed. No, that was no, one I, of the problems. No, I, I, I'm just I think talking they, overall. Yeah, I think that they have, um, they have taken been. steps. Yeah, the yeah. question is how effective have their steps right. been? Yeah. Um, Which is why I put down the training. But well, right. whether it's the program or the training, they... Well, I, I, I think it's, it, it's some of both, and as we get further in at the end of the report, he, uh, at the end of, of their audit, there are some items that weren't addressed at all. Mm -hmm. I also mentioned... Sorry, could I just... Before I forget. Is that screen also in Spanish? That screen that's supposed to come up? There is supposed to be a the screen. Okay. I just was wondering how that... And I should have asked, you know, but I was more like, yeah. I need to get my license last day. You can ask with your mom. Yeah. Um, but I was just wondering if they, they did have it um, in a bilingual setup. Thank you. Sorry. I'll, I had I'll mentioned at one of our meetings before having gone to a conference where I saw a presentation from the Free Charitable Trust and some of the work that they were doing with motor vehicle administrations nationwide. And one of the things that was highlighted in that presentation is that the phrasing that is commonly used of the do you want to register to vote is answered seasonally by people with the yes. That as an election is coming up, people say yes. When there's no election coming up, people say no. And that the phrasing of that contributes to the spikes that we see in you know, the, the volume right before an election and people not updating their information in year as a result. So that's on their radar screen as something that they would like to address with other states as well as Maryland. It, it sounds like providing the current information is an important step then, so that people know that they're already there. Because for people who don't think about elections as often as we do, it may be that in an odd number of years they go to the Motor Vehicle Administration and they just don't care. Or perhaps the phrasing yeah. could prompt people to give an update even if they think they are registered right. but are not. Right. Please, to be so. please check your information here and make sure your address is current. Or, you know, the next row in the chart mentions the problem cases we had with voters using the kiosk in the web. And what we had highlighted, and this is from my own testing with MVA personnel on the phone with me as I was doing a transaction on the website, it seemed as though if you have an, an interruption in your internet connection, instead of getting an error message, you just get sent out to the main screen so that you bypass the voter registration section. Um, or, you know, that. We weren't sure what the reason was, but I personally, um, there was a motor vehicle staff member on the phone with me when he was able to replicate the problem that I had. So the response saying that it wasn't possible, to, you know, it wasn't easy to replicate, doesn't really speak to the specific case we ran into. But, but you know, apparently there was also an issue with voters being confused on when to hit next or cancel, and so they have addressed that. Um, and then we got into the um, the signature aspect of it. Um, now, if you if the voter is affirmatively clicking yes, then using the previously captured signature in an in-person transaction or in an online transaction is consistent with the way we generally do online voter registration in the state. Um, but I believe the concern here was that when that signature is being used particularly when there is a situation where the voter is it's questionable whether the voter is really taking any affirmative act here at all, that that was where some of these issues were coming into play with individuals. Right. Does the voter paper. get to see that signature? When, if you push yes, then do you get to see your signature? Do you know? Did you see it? Do you know, see what I mean? To no, make sure that I yours... I I signed for my license, but I didn't see... 
Well, you weren't changing your voter Well, you were not registering. Right. And that's the signature they're going to use, the signature that you signed I'm for sorry. the license. Yep. Because right. well, no, uh, you right. don't sign this. Yeah, well, it sounds like she didn't ask to change her voter information, so there would be nothing to sign. But if you say yes to this, they use your previous signature. Yeah, that's right. And what I'm saying that's is, does the voter, to. does the person that's standing there then get to see that signature? Does it come up on a screen so you make sure that it's yours? <clears throat> where, am, where am I missing this on here? I, yeah, I, I, ca I can't were, find I it. I thought they were changing that. Page three, yeah. uh, section two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Even there. when I signed for my license, I didn't get to see. Didn't you, you sign in the little Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you didn't see your signature? No, no, there? no, when well, you do it. But I saw, I thought what she it meant was then you see it later on your form oh, or, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah a absolutely. I mean, we're still not happy. I mean, because our initial request was to have a, another signature. Am That's I right. am I not That's right? right. Exactly. We want we wanted a signature on the registration as well. Um, now, I I think a fallback position could be that they could transpose the previous signature, but. We want to see it. Exactly. The voter needs to see it. Exactly. And then check yes at that point when they've seen the signature and they re mm -hmm. agree it's theirs, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's the full name and if somebody has a different last name than they had before that it's been changed and I think there's a number of reasons that you would want to see your signature. I think you address that skipping ahead to the top of page six. That's where the item was, where there's, there's a summary screen for you to attach that all of that is, is accurate. Well, and the, and the fact that there's no summary screen is just not acceptable. I mean, mm -hmm. we I, I absolutely we want a summary screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like you do when, on a voting right. machine, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. so right. that you can then have another right. read through of all there's your no information. There's no summary screen and there's no verification for anything you have right. done, any transaction. So I would be satisfied with either one, you know, but at least you have something that you can confirm what you have done. Mm -hmm. So the rows we skipped there were um, lack of a clear record of whether the voter made the selection or the agent did so. So now we'll see this new process of having an override <coughs> code entered in mm -hmm. that should provide a record how what that so information will contain yeah. or you know how or when that is shared with us yeah and maybe because you say i'm already registered maybe they have a special code that they yeah. put in yeah. and then well, we'll be able you know. to find out well, yeah look yours up <laughs> yeah <laughs> see if there's any yeah. you get yeah. notification like the green party. Party. and then we <laughs> have two more <laughs> green party. we have two more we had the particular problem case that was with the individual of a a non-citizen permanent resident what page are you on now five. On five. five you're on page five yeah, you've gone over you're through yeah, with these well, others yours. That was my case. Yes, yeah. a lot of it is, is a, a, a duplication of the same type of issues, if you know what and I mean. That, to me, is a very, very worrisome issue. What I believe we were able to, so the NBA response covers really three different, it, it notes that the voter registration question does not appear when the voter is obtaining a non-federally compliant driver's license. And so that's a situation where the Motor Vehicle Administration knows that this is an individual who is not a citizen, but is also not a permanent, regi regi permanent resident who would be eligible to get a, a real ID or a federally compliant driver's license as well. So the, the circumstance of a non-citizen who is eligible to get the federally compliant ID um, in that case, what they did is add language right at the front of the voter registration process. It was that at the very end, you did have the oath where you needed to check yes, that you were a citizen was one of the things included in the list. But at that very initial screen where you're asked if you wanted to register to vote or not, it didn't say, I am a U.S. citizen and I want to register to vote. So they're adding that aspect to that earlier screen. See, that is even confusing to, to me. And I'll tell you, in this specific case, and it was actually the dad of one of our judges on early voting, um, he had not even uh, attempted to, to register to vote. It was done automatically for him, which was worrisome. But having the language before, the language really, and even if you had the language, it still could be you know room for mistakes and so on. 
but checking the fact that you are a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident, as soon as you check the box with permanent resident, it should not even allow you to go any further to register to vote at all. That should be like, mm -hmm. that should be like an That's instant good. block. You know, that should be it. There should be no, you know, uh, any 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 more questions about voter registration. And the reason why this is so important is because. Um, this gentleman was in his process of applying for his U.S. Um, citizenship, and that is a federal offense. And he didn't, you know. And so you have people who are applying for the U.S. citizenship without knowing that might be committing a federal offense. And we are a community of, of a large immigrant population in Montgomery County. We have, you know, a lot of uh, biotech and all and so on that you know they're in the process of becoming U.S. citizens. So as soon as you check. I'm a U.S. resident. That's it. There should be no more further any anything else to check. Like you should not even get any voter the registration. The screen should automatically put absolutely to the next right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that can be done. So I can imagine that their IT people cannot. I mean, I'm not an IT expert for, by no means, but that seems like a very simple thing to do. <laughs> I would like so. to take it one step more because when I read this and I thought about. The mm -hmm. example you use, uh, and also a question I got from somebody else outside. This ought to be on our paper applications too. The first question: Are you a U.S.? It's down at the bottom. Of, uh, I think the application you sent me to vote, uh, not for me to vote, but when I asked you one, that at the, it says at the bottom: Are you a U.S. citizen? It seems to me that that ought to be the first question that anybody gets when they're applying the to vote. It's at the they're, top? They're saying it's on the top. Yeah, I thought it was at the top. Can you no, go, there's some I'm old sorry. forms. Can I get one, please? Okay. There might be some old forms that, but, yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. I hope it is, because it, it ought to be the first question. Yeah, no, I'm That's certainly more important than where you live. And this is what it's very they're saying small. is the first. Yeah. I think it you is. need a little magnifying glass. So it should be like... Huh? Because truly, I think there's, you know. Yes, to the first yeah. step. This is first it could step. be a lot of issues for folks who. But what happens now if somebody checks no on that? Uh, it it doesn't end the process. I don't know. We can we can double well, check. Okay. You that's the you, question. That, that right? one I mean, you don't want to test. You, it, it goes <laughs> back to the what did you say, Marianne? I'm, I'm saying sir. what what happens now if somebody you know checks oh, no I'll there see. they're not a citizen then will the screen go isn't, dark? Isn't, isn't the question now <laughs> the a question? Compound question? <laughs> yes. It's not just, it's not just are you a citizen? It's are you a citizen and want to register? It says yes, I am a U.S. citizen and want to re and want to apply to register to vote. No. I am declining to apply to registered vote at the MVA today. That's the new language as edited. Mm -hmm. so I still, see. So it doesn't, doesn't ask them if they're you, a citizen, right. which well, maybe the first one, the first don't want to. Yes, yeah. 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 So it goes back to the earlier question of that certainty that it is the voter themselves who is checking these boxes as opposed right. to, That's you know, and that even in the situation where the voter is checking the boxes, they identified some additional things they could do to help make sure that the voter knew what they were doing when they agreed to register to vote. Um, we discussed the summary screen issue, and then the very last column is a, a different question, which was the, the concern that was raised about the sufficiency of the, the, the custody trail for hard copy voter mm -hmm. registration when they receive them. Um, and effectively, the response from the Motor Vehicle Administration is that we do not track these at the individual level. We track how many we receive, and that's consistent with what other states do. This brought up to me when I read this is, do we want to do that at all? Do we have many that drop it off at MVA? And would this be something that we just don't want to offer? Because well, there's no I, custody. I, I talked to Margaret about this when uh, Allison and I were working on, on this uh, issue. Uh, and uh, you might want to speak to this, Margaret, because we have locations throughout the county where people can drop registrations. It's not unique to MVA, yeah. right? And, but are they all handled the same way? Yes, that they're we dropped in a box and no... Where, no. where are the other ones? Uh, library. We have a huge, there's libraries, recreation centers, community centers, U.S. Postal Services, 
at Gilcrest Center, um, okay, yeah, all the MBA on. locations. Uh, social services, and some of this is federal law. So federal one. law. The other okay. piece okay. is that mm -hmm. the yeah, no, MBA, okay. if you do and certain transactions online, they automatically send you, Thank you a voter registration form, and some people utilize that form and drop it off. For whatever reason, they choose not to go to the kiosk, they choose not to go and do face-to-face, -face. they just I'm drop it off. And well, they don't want the line, I presume, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. You'd have to wait in line for the other part of the process. So we do receive literally thousands of them. And yes, that does occur. There are mistakes that are made by human beings in the fact that they don't file them correctly. Um, but last year in the 2014 election, we had three, three, into three, three, there was, um, um, Miss Bagley was one of them, and then when we were looking for Miss Bagley and working with the MVA, they found two that had been misfiled, and we were able to correct that. And then there was one more. Uh, uh, I can't think of his name right off the top of my head, but that was the person that was discussed at the county council meeting. Was that Mr. Bagley's husband? Yes, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, cause that, I mean that, that was a, a big one because that was one where he, he said he registered at the Motor Vehicle Administration right. and they said we have no record of it. Right. Okay, that, and, or and, he and, did and, an electronic and, one, she did the paper one. Yeah, the records indicated that he had declined, but he had said no. And neither one of them showed up. Right. right. Yeah, what are the odds? Yeah. Very slim. They should play the lottery. Right, but right, right. I mean, I mean, very, very slim that he went to the Motor Vehicle Administration after relocating mm -hmm. from out of state in the job that he has, where he's, where, where road registration is part of his job, um, and for him to then come to Maryland and decline to register himself, and but then claim to us that he did, uh, you know, I think that's a pretty slim chance. One more question I have. So. I had interaction with the clerk at MBA <clears throat> because over 40, you have to go with the clerk, okay? Under 40, you can use the kiosk. So I'm just... You're talking age? Oh, yeah. Hey. You're, saying, you're saying that that's, there's actually a Wait, sign that says that? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. If you're old you people... Right. <laughs> if you're what they say, old people get in this Yeah, line. what? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, right. it's, 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 it's because it's of the work. mission, okay? It's too bad Kevin isn't here because he could pick up a lot of business out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, there oh, is because... Mr. Shalek would like the business. <laughs> it's because over 40, you have to do a mandatory... I think it's by statute. You have to do a mandatory uh, vision screening. So you have to see... Okay, you have to see the clerk, because I was like, I went to the kiosk, okay, and I, was, and, and I was going through, but I was wondering how the process is at the kiosk, because you don't see, you know, when, when you renew your license, what comes up on the screen, and, and then if you're able, I guess you have to, right, you're, you have total control of what you touch and what you don't touch and what you register for and that, so, so I'm a little bit concerned <laughs> with that, with that process. So if anybody had their 40, who is going to... Well, well what would happen if we went to a kiosk and started to do it? The minute our birthday comes up, they'll... <laughs> oh, it you out. Oh, it said, no, literally, it says, you're too old. No, it just said, please proceed to the see, office to see the car. Or the police will be called. <laughs> I have to go, too. I'm, I'll see. But, um, to but I'm just wondering license what, license you know, license what the license. process is when I'm somebody under the 40 uh, renews their license go. and go. how that, Mine is next year. how the screen looks so what they have to do because it has to ask them, do you want to register to vote, yes or no? I, I think the, the only person in this room here. that might be able to answer that question is Lisa. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> or this Lisa. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Don't lie to me. Oh, just <laughs> because he's when, when you're under 40 and you go to the class yes. to renew your license, those, they don't pop up. It doesn't ask you, are you a registered? It just uses whatever information you already have, and it goes off that. So it doesn't even tell you. It doesn't even ask you whether you want to vote? About Seriously? She just did those in December. I just did mine. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous, too. Did you, do that? you did it in December? Yes, I already okay. so voted already, so it just used my same information. 
Yes, eight did years. It, oh, oh okay. No, it said it Maybe because she was registered. But yeah. It, it doesn't tell me that I was already registered. I already know I'm a registered voter. So if you don't know, it right. doesn't prompt you at the kiosk. Right. You know. Well, I guess did one you of our. Did you Hill too? No, you were up in. I went to Gatesburg. So, one of our questions, perhaps, aside from the amazing question of how it is that they just that they divide people based on age, <laughs> uh, age which I which I still. <laughs> Let me tell you, I feel horrible. I, I can't. I can't imagine. But anyway, um, certainly, if they, not getting older, only you only have one other alternative. So don't right. worry. No, about no it. obviously, well, well, it's basically, you know, I would make a pretty good argument that being told that you have to wait in line to talk to a person at the NBA is not something that people want. Um, yeah, no, and, that, and, yeah. And, and, and would be and would be a form of discrimination. But anyway, um, my no, my question is. I'd like to find out to make sure that however they're handling voting, they're handling it the same for people below and above age 40. Because we obviously have no distinction between anybody between 18 and 120. Yeah, exactly. You know. My, my personal uh, suspicion here is that a part of what is going on on the website and at the kiosk is interruptions in the signal. And when you have interruptions in the signal, then you don't see the voter registration screens that you're supposed to see. Because you are supposed to see them, but the reports that you don't are often enough. Okay. Then it has been explained to me by staff at the MBA that if they have an interruption in the, in the internet connection during the course of the transaction that you make, that you will not see the screen. Well, Seems like there's a lot of those. Yeah, but what yeah. happens if they have an interruption when they're dealing with MBA information? They make you start over again? Because obviously, one would hope that the interruption is not only when you get into the voter registration portion of what you're doing. Uh, let's, uh, I need to bring this to conclusion because we still have a lot of stuff to do. Uh, on this form, uh, Donis had a uh, suggestion. It's a uh, it's a um, it's a state board of election form, so it needs to go to them. But I thought it it, it made sense. The are you a U.S. citizen appears under the are you at least 16 years old. They ought to flip that and make it the very first question. I think it's actually a federal it's, question. It's in that first. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. It's dictated federal law. Federal law says that this age comes first. The it, it, the phrasing at the beginning of the voter registration form is dictated in federal law for the federal Coast Guard application. So all the all so all the states have that form, Adam. Mm -hmm. The first two questions. Okay. They're, they're, they're Can both, we put it in a heavier ink? They're, 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 next they're both, to it's heavier they're ink. They're both absolute disqualifiers. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And, it's, and it says that. It then right. says if, if no to either, don't complete the form. Okay. But, um, right. yeah. but anyway, yeah. Yeah. it is a little, okay. Well, so we, won't, right. we won't fight the battles. We, no. we can't <laughs> win. Uh, what I would like to propose that we do from here is uh, to respond again uh, to, to the committee um, and, um, you know, telling them that we have, uh, you know, analyzed uh, the, the response uh, and that we basically don't think it's sufficient for uh, what necessitated our initial inquiry. And, and could I add that we also, in the initial inquiry, asked them to audit the people, some of the people who had registered or re-registered, if you will, gotten a new license in the last year. Well, I think we ought to have a paragraph in there describing our rationale for requesting the audit and what we meant by the audit to begin with. And then we can, uh, you know, enumerate these uh, items that we have found that still are a problem. And what I would like to do is to suggest that because Motor Vehicle is having a an audit in August, uh, that, uh, you know, they may wish to include these, these items in that. Uh, however, you know, we're concerned about time and with the election coming up next year and registration that's ongoing uh, as a result, uh, you, you know, sooner is better than, than not, but at least there's that vehicle there uh, if they want to uh, use and it. May I ask you to send a copy of the letter to Joe Getty, second floor in the governor's office, yeah. 
was liaison to the legislation, the legislation, and voter integrity is a one of his huge issues. Yes, David. Um, I agree completely with the uh, goals. Uh, I want to talk about the strategy for a moment, and I'm wondering whether it's a better strategy for us to go back to the audit committee that apparently has made a decision to proceed in a certain way and come back in six months, or is it a better strategy for us to go to the Motor Vehicle Administration with a copy to the audit committee and say, thank you for all the things that you've done so far, here are all the things that we think still need to be done, um, and address it in that fashion. Um, my concern is, is uh, first off, that um, although I agree that the steps they've taken are not sufficient, they have taken some steps, they have responded, um, and I think that the legislative auditors may very well not be interested in jumping right back in at this moment until they've had a chance to see what happens and, to, and, and you know after six months there'll be many more examples like mm -hmm. like Gracie's in all likelihood um, to to act upon um, we want these state agencies to feel like uh, they do get some you know there's some there's some benefit to them to uh, to to responding favorably and by copying the audit committee we would we would be letting them know that we still think there's a ways to go, um, but we're not quite directly saying to them, we don't like the way you handled our letter. Um, because, I don't think we're um, saying that. We're just saying it, it doesn't completely deal with it. I really think we should not waste that uh, opportunity of August, however, and the six months could fall outside that. I don't, well, six months from February is August, so, um, What's the date on the letter that the, that the audit committee wrote? Was it doing March? And also the May and No, I thought that the, the, the letter came before our February meeting. Uh, January 14th was the letter to the joint. No, January 14th was the letter to Linda and Milt Chaffee. Wait, I, I have it here. It's. Um, and then January, January 26th. February 24th is the letter to me from um, the chairs. Okay, but when the chair first said that he was going to do the six months, what date was that? He that's, 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 that's February 24th. No, no, the letter to you came after the, he first said it. I mean, he said it, he said it to the media before he said it to us, I thought. Well, he, he might have, yeah. he's talking about, this, this is, is what's official, official. you yeah. don't. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, February 24th is still six months from August. So, uh, so, but they're so. preparing for an audit, David. I mean, I, I, I just think that um, also, I don't know if you know, but sure. the audit committee meets after the session. That's their general uh, traditional uh, time, time of meeting, uh, so that particular committee. Right. Uh, so, you know. Uh, we want to make sure we hit these windows, and as I say, the uh, but I I think it's a twofold thing. I think we should go. Uh, we certainly can reach out to motor vehicle on some of these issues, where especially we have feedback now. Gracie's, you know, example. But uh, this it it also deserves a response back to the committee with you know, um, the fact that we just haven't gone away. Because some of this is mushy, very mushy. Yeah, okay. I, um, you know, and I think I think a lot of this is coming from this from the state board, <laughs> uh, in terms of what they want to do and not yeah. do. Um, okay, so we'll move forward with that, and we'll make sure everybody's copied on on what we move forward with. Uh, the next item is the proposed bylaw amendment. That should be in your packet. One page. Proposed bylaw is on the back. <laughs> I have so much paper here. I have so much paper here. Huh? Here it is. Oh. 
Oh, it, it, you don't mean in this packet, in the earlier one? Yeah, it's I've, in both, actually. Okay. I know I have it in the packet I brought. Here we go. Okay. Section 22, it, it's... Is this it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's on the back of this one. And it's... Okay. Right. The, the, right. the, 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 the back shows you what the current bylaw says. Compared, Thank you. you know, because sure the, and we have... Um, well, okay. So, David, this uh, uh, this was offered by you. Um, if you'd like to uh, put it out for purposes of discussion. Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm moving to approve. Okay. Is 20 days the same as the yes. others? Yes. 20 days is yes. the same it, as, it, as it, what's required for the, other. the yeah. election of, of the board president at the, at the beginning of a board term. Um, as well as under our, that's a, that's a statutory um, um, time period. Mm -hmm. And then under our bylaws, there's also uh, the 20 days within the beginning of a term to elect the vice president and the secretary. So this would treat a vacancy for an officer position the same way as... Um, well, that's the same 20 days. Yeah. Correct. The president and the secretary. Yeah. The and president, the secretary, and the vice president, president are all 20 days from the beginning of the board term. This would treat a vacancy for one of those positions as essentially like the beginning of a board term. Um, and it would be treated the same way that the, the, the 20 days would start from the point at which the vacancy was created. I think it's been pointed out that the 20 days in this instance uh, really creates a problem in that, I mean, there's a definite difference between the beginning of the board term and when we have the initial election of officers. And yes, you want to get everything up and running and, and it's all done, you know, within 20 days of the first board meeting and you do that. Uh, in this case, where we have ongoing board meetings, that in most cases are, you know, every, every month. Uh, I think there should be language that reflects that uh, to say at, that would begin with at the next board, scheduled board meeting or, uh, you know, if, if you want the 20 days I, or 30 days, whatever, uh, You know, I, I think the preference would be to do it at the next board meeting if the next board meeting just falls at that time. Because to have a special meeting you, for you're, it. You're, you're saying if the board meeting is less than 20 days or more than 20 days? Well, I'm saying at the next board meeting, period, okay. uh, you know, if, if the next board meeting falls within the next, it's generally 30 days. Right, but as, as we learned this time, mm -hmm. Um, that's obviously not always the case. In this case, we, our, our, our next board meeting was postponed. Um, and um, um, my, my own view would be that I do not have an objection to if the board wants to change the number of days from 20 to 30. I think that the next regular scheduled board meeting is subject to a lot of other factors that such a vacancy should not be. Board meetings are scheduled um, based on how much business we have. Board meetings are scheduled by the, the president of the board. Um, board meetings board meetings can happen or not happen based on the presence of a quorum. The weather. Um, the weather, um, you know, or, 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 any, or any of those things. Um, I don't know, it's too bad that, that Kevin's not here. I don't know whether we have the legal authority to have a meeting by telephone. Um, if we do, then 20 days is actually not a big deal. Um, and, um, and, if we, um, and if we don't, I think 30 days is not a big deal. Um, but um, I do think that it should be something that should be determined by the calendar and not by a person. I think that if there's a vacancy, the calendar and the rules should dictate what happens next in order to um, avoid misunderstandings. I have no comment about the 20 days, but I do, I am concerned about the becomes ineligible. Who makes that determination? The member themselves says, um, I'm going to be ineligible? It's the same language as, um, 
as as is um, in the vacancy provision, I believe, in in the bylaws. I didn't I didn't invent that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. Ha it doesn't seem to be on this piece of paper, but um, I believe. Um, I, um, I didn't. I didn't mean to add anything that wasn't what was already there. I believe you become ineligible, for example, if you move outside of Montgomery County. Well, I understand yeah. I, um, that that kind of thing, or they would probably resign. But I'm thinking specifically about Nancy. Well, you become ineligible if you miss a certain number of meetings in a row, which she didn't. Um, so, so. Um, I don't think it was so we don't it, it make that determination. We don't come in here and vote if well, she's ineligible. That it, there is a I believe that the, I, I believe yeah. that the rules make it happen yeah. automatically. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Pretty so and again, that's just my make sure this isn't changing. Right. No. 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 It's not, no, no. no my, my goal is exactly not to have it determined by the people. It's to have it determined by the rules, um, so that so that it wouldn't be. Um, Used in a in a uh, negative in a, way, in, right. an, in an improperly either partisan or personal way. I mean, it's you know, it's it's designed to be you know, when there's a vacancy, here's what we do, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to yeah. um, having a lot of um, yeah. um, leeway for individuals to um, to change it. I guess the only thing I think is preferable is. If it could be at the next board meeting, uh, and that that, to this. that would be you know uh, the preference, or not later than, mm -hmm. and then you know X number of days. So you would suggest that we add language that says um, after after an eligible comma at the next regularly scheduled board meeting, and in no event later than the first, you know, than within 30 days of the creation or, so, or, or so, something along the lines, so, something along the lines of that if there's a meeting before the 30 days, you wouldn't, you wouldn't let it go 30 days. Right, exactly. Or I 20, mean, you, you do it, you do it at the next board meeting. Yeah, because on the other side, it, that, that is a different days or, situation. Or the next. Would, no, if you say, the other way well, 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 you say 20 days or the next board meeting, whichever is sooner. No, I, that does not work for what I'm trying to achieve. Well, what are you trying to achieve? I'm trying to have it at the at the next, not to call a special meeting if we're going to be meeting within, you know, 30 days. <laughs> okay, so, you're, so what you want to do is you want to change 20 to 30. And in addition to changing 20 to 30, you want to specify that if there's a regularly scheduled meeting during that time frame, that it would be... That it, would it would be, be at that time. It would time. be at that meeting. So what would happen if it was like our... February meeting, and we had a regularly scheduled meeting, and then for whatever reason it wasn't held, then it would still have to be done within the 30 days. Right? Yes, then you would you would go ahead and do it, and uh, well, and I believe we yes we can have uh, uh, that came up before, and, and I think Kevin decreed that in certain circumstances we can have telephone. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Well, then, we well, then why, so why is the 20 days an issue? Right. You had a run back issue. Well, because it's just, it's better to have things done at a regularly scheduled board meeting and something like filling a vacancy, you know, I mean, there's... Well, not unless you're in the middle of an election or in situations where you need to, to have an officer in place, you know what I mean, or to sign... Um, what is it that we sign at the we, we, we may all have we different have ideas as to when it's important or stuff to have like an that, officer right? in place. Right? So, so with the example of you know how we canceled this last meeting, if we had that language, we would, we would have to wait it 60 days if we were to follow that without this. No, no, no. We would have the days in there, too. It's the next scheduled board meeting or 30, uh, you know, uh, no longer than 30 days. Well, I, 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 would, I, would, I would suggest if we're going to go in, in that direction that we phrase it like what Denise was suggesting. We would change 20 to 30 and then after um, the comma after vacancy we would say or at the next regularly scheduled board meeting whichever is sooner. Well, you can say on or before the next board meeting. Thirty days on or before. No, 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 I would leave I, with what, twenty. What, what, 
I, I think what I just said right. would accomplish what Marianne was saying, mm -hmm. if, I, if I understood it correctly. Let, let, let me read it to you again so that you guys... Why um, can't you leave the 20 well, you, with the same language? You mm -hmm. could leave the 20 with the same language if you were so inclined. Um, Which, but, 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 um, what Marianne but, said about that, uh, Denise, is yeah, I don't want if they're we, right. having a board meeting 22 days <laughs> after this vacancy, and that would mean two. Or, or, or at the, 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 the common was, or at the next board, board meeting. Right, well, well, except that, what, okay, so, so what, you have a value judgment here, which is if your regularly scheduled board meeting is 22 days later, do you think that that is soon enough or not soon enough? And Mary Ann clearly thinks that that's soon enough. And I can't tell whether Denise thinks that that's soon enough. But, but I mean, that's, that's really, you know, that's really, really what we're talking about. What did I, you just I, say? I, what did, read again what you just said. Okay. What I said was, let's leave aside for a second the question of the number of days. So um, it says, within the first 20 days of the creation of such vacancy, comma, or at the next regularly scheduled board meeting, comma, whichever is sooner. Yeah. And then a comma after that, the board shall elect by majority vote. And so, we, so all we're talking about is we want to make that 30. I'd like to make it 30. Well, may, may I suggest, could we vote on one and then vote on the other? I mean, I, I'm willing to make both motions, but and I obviously don't vote. But what I'm saying is, is that <laughs> I, I suspect that the idea of doing it at the next regular scheduled meeting if it's within the time frame would have widespread support and that the idea of how many days there might be some differences of opinion. You made the motion. Uh, do no. you do you accept the amendment? Uh, under Robert's rules, that is what, what, what I accept is not relevant uh, to uh, it's only a question of what people move and, and how the group votes. So. I don't, you know, what I accept is, I'm, I'm Well, I mean, uh, we're, we're going to make them, as the, as the maker of the motion, you can. As the you, maker of the motion can, under Robert's rules, I uh, do not have any further rights than anybody else. Uh, I, I am going to make an amendment to the motion, uh, but you could, you could accept it. No, under Robert's rules, I cannot accept the okay. motion. I am one person. We need person. to make a motion to amend this correct okay, can, can is that the way it's handled first i am making a motion first, to hold, 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 hold on for, first oh. first Ooh. there needs to be a well you can call time if you want i'm about to help you out here first there needs to be a second to the motion there hasn't been a second right, to the second. motion, and, to so motion we, yet and hold it. can i do this hold question hold on, hold on. Yeah. Well, i want to know what the motion is yeah. again if you could yes. say the motion we may again. have to, we may have to get kevin on the phone okay so we have I david the motion again David, who made, who is the maker of the motion, and Jackie Phillips is the second person, seconder, correct? Yeah. To the main motion. To the main motion. Okay. And All right. So clarity on what the motion is. The original motion. The original is motion David. is what's on the piece of paper. Right. Okay. 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 Not amended. Not, 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 amended. not amended in any fashion yes, so right. far. Right. Okay. Okay. So now. Right. Okay. Then now, do you, Mary Ann. You want to propose your amendment before I propose right. the other amendment? about the next regular scheduled board meeting? Uh, I want to propose my amendment, which, yes, is the language that I wish I had in front of me. Um, basically, is it's, if a board officer described in this section dies, resigns, is removed, or becomes ineligible the first uh, the within first the first 30, 30 days of the creation of such vacancy oh, or at the, at the next, next regular board scheduled board meeting, meeting whichever is sooner. Which is, yeah. Whichever is sooner. Okay. The, the board, board shall elect okay. by a majority yeah, vote of the regular members a regular member to fill such vacancy. I just read it in full so it's on the uh, okay. tape so that they can now, figure it out. Now let me ask you. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Is there a I second to that? Yeah, that's yeah. what I yes. need. A I second yes. Mary Ann's motion. No. I second it. And we vote on that first, correct? Do we just do, do one vote? So no, is that's, it, that's the rule. If you want discussion or if you have a question, this is the time yeah. to do it, Jackie. No, 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 no I don't have any questions. Okay. What I'm, my, well, yeah, I do. My question is now, do we vote on the um, addition 
You vote on we Mary vote Ann's on, amendment. We vote on, right. yeah, yeah, we vote on the amendment. amendment. Okay, I just under, want to make sure uh, I know what I'm voting Under Robert's ahead, rules, if somebody wanted to move to divide the question and vote on the days separately from the other, they could. Yeah. I'm not making that. No, that's yeah. right. Okay, yeah. Mary Ann did okay. the class for So well, then we'll, we'll call the uh, vote on the amendment. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, as stated, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm, I'm sorry. Amendment. And yeah, you we all okay. said aye. So we have four votes. Yes. Aye, aye. Okay. I voted. Okay, so we have five votes. Five votes in favor of the amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, opposed? Abstain? Okay. You have five of you voted. Yeah, I was going to say there's only five people. <laughs> <laughs> so. And now we vote on now we vote the amendment. Oh, that's right, because he can't vote. I, I'm as sorry. I was David, looking. as amended. As amended. <laughs> Correct. As amended. Do you want me now. to read it? Yes. Um, yeah. I think David gets to vote on this. I, let me I don't think I do. Yeah, you do. You vote on uh, you vote on board. On bylaws amendments? Yeah. yeah, we yeah. Said we, Kevin you said you could. 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 Remember? I yeah. trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. you're right. We have another oh, door. I know you're right. right. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. Okay, put me down in favor too. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, he gets here the I, vote. Here I was trying to be good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, that is. This is your time. Do you, have, yeah. do you have the motion, the second? Do you have all the yes. information? Yes, you have yes. We have yeah. That. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, so David okay. gets to vote too, so okay. that's I get to vote too. I don't know what his vote is. So okay. I voted in favor. Okay. okay. So it's six, 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 six to zero. Here's the, here's the amended motion. If a board officer described in the section dies, resigns, is removed, or becomes ineligible within the first 20, I'm sorry, within the first 30 okay. days, of the creation of such vacancy or at the next regularly scheduled board meeting, whichever is sooner, uh, the board shall elect by a majority vote of the regular members a regular member to fill such vacancy. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And we uh, need to vote on that. Uh, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Now, the, uh, this is now published on our website we'll for, 30 for 30 days and so will become effective at the next board meeting. That is cool. With no further so action. Have to this, 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 this has already been before people for 30 days, for more than 30 days, for 60 days. Yeah. No, Not it hasn't this. been before amendment. them as, a, as an amendment, the amendment to the, the uh, bylaws. Well, no. the... the Kevin and I actually had a conversation about this before the scheduled February meeting where he expressed to me his view that the, that the board could vote on and immediately and, and adopt, an, even with an amendment, this motion. Um, and I'm looking for the provision that he was referring to. Where is the provision that talks about the third the minutes. No, 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 not in the minutes. It's in the bylaws where it says about how to amend the bylaws. He and I had a whole conversation. Mm -hmm. Enactment. It says the Bible. Can we just go on and Kevin tell us what to do? No. He advises us. Advises what yes. to do. I'm sorry. Wrong wording. Well, that's a it's kind of an important difference. <laughs> In this instance. Uh, Section 1.3 has the amendment. Right, 1.3D says, in order yeah. to amend the bylaws, a member must make a motion and present the amendment during a regular scheduled meeting of the board. That was done in January. Mm -hmm. There was no the motion, motion in January. The motion to yeah. amend the bylaws must be approved by a majority vote of the full board, including substitute members, at the next regularly scheduled meeting of the board. That's today. That, but there was, was no motion. But it was there not. There was no motion in January. There was a motion in January. There was a discussion where Mary Ann said to push it on. We'll discuss it further in February. What page is that? That the, is the, page nine of the Well, the meeting. idea that that was not a motion is ridiculous. Well, it wasn't okay. discussed or, or voted. Okay. No, so it, it doesn't it, have to it, be discussed or voted. It has to be moved. I proposed an amendment. I handed it to everybody. Yeah, we even started a conversation an about it. You asked that the, discussion, yeah. that the discussion be postponed. The yeah. idea that that's not considered a motion is ridiculous. Yeah. If you want to not consider it a motion, that's fine. In the future, if I make a proposal, I will make sure to use the word move in what I say. But it does say it was a proposed amendment to the I just, I think we have always had 
uh, bylaw amendments posted as such on the website so that so that the public is aware of Was it. it. I mean, we, we've made January. other... No. No. Well, then, that, then that's a mistake. Um, I mean, obviously, it was, you know, it was proposed in January so that it could be voted on in February, um, and um, this extra it has requirement. To be posted. It doesn't say it has to be posted. There's no posting requirement no. in the box. Yeah, it doesn't say. It, where, where does it say it has to be posted? It has been posted in the past. That's been, but it it, does. it doesn't say that here. So we, it it goes to the the state board has to approve it though. Are you going to yes. mention a letter from... Yeah, it should be sent. Well, in, in light of, uh, you know, the transparency that this board has all been about, and including the fact that we uh, we now have, uh, you know, uh, our, our minutes uh, so that people can... Uh, the audio of our minutes so that they can hear the board discussion, etc., uh, and the fact that they've, it's always been posted on the website as a bylaw amendment for people to, to see. Um, I don't... Uh, you, you've, 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 you've given a good argument for why it should have been posted in January. Um, there is a difference since then, which is that now the public could have listened to the tape if they wanted to. Um, there's unlikely to be a vacancy for an officer in the next 30 days, but um, I, I, I would say that um, if, in fact, it's going to be, um, uh, if, if posting is going to be the new standard, I would suggest that we amend the bylaws to require posting. Otherwise, I think we've met the requirements of, uh, of the bylaws. And if we're going to start getting, you know, really technical about what's a motion and what isn't a motion, then, you know, okay, that's good to know. Um, There's no harm in it's, posting it, though. No, no. It's not I, a new standard. It's it's the it's the current standard. Uh, no, posting. It's a, it's a new standard. It's posting not is the current. It's it's how it's always been done. So. Yes, but it would but have been done in January. But well, we've wasn't. already voted on it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, so. Usually so what are we? We're it, posting it's posted, it and then it be, and, and then it becomes official. It has to go to the state board. No, no, we, I understand that. So when we post board, it on our website, it's going to indicate that the board adopted this amendment. Yeah. FYI. You know, on X date, you know, <laughs> on, on, on March 16th, by a vote of 6 to 0. Correct. Well, this, this I, is I, no I, I have no problem with posting it. It, 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 has, you know, it has no impact on, on when it takes This effect. is no different than when we uh, amended, and during our term, we amended the bylaws yes, uh, with several things, including uh, the fact that you can make a motion. <laughs> Let's go. So, moving on.